Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's survive si Paul J. Palaktakan natin ang tanong mo. You know, earlier, tinanong ko yung mga kapatid niya. Sabi ko kanya ba talaga magsalita si Paul J. Sa ba kahit sa bahay. And sabi ng mga kapatid niya, ganyan daw. Kahit ang joke siya, yung mukha niya parang... You know, ganun pa rin. <laughs> But it's good to see people na uh, leveling up. Alam niyo, yun ang tema natin for uh, July and December. Level up, okay? Uh, that's our, our ikang thematic goal uh, for the rest of the months of this year. And uh, we have a new series for starting today. The title po niya is Lies or Promises. And so before we go there, uh, let me just announce also that this coming Saturday po, um, actually last Saturday we had a seminar. For those of you na hindi nyo alam, we had the MP4 training seminar para sa mga tao po na gusto sumali sa outreach natin. And this coming Saturday, That's next week, uh, July 13, mula 8 a.m. hanggang 10 a.m. Uh, we're going to have another, uh, you know, uh, specialized ministry training para naman po sa mga tao who are involved in our, for our events. So yung mga workers na kasama po natin sa mga katulad nito Sunday service, upbeat, ganyan-ganyan, yung iba natin mga gawain, especially inside the church. Uh, we invite you to please attend po the seminar this coming Saturday, July 13, uh, starting po at 8 a.m. hanggang 10 a.m. So it's just a short two-hour seminar. We're just going to talk about paano pinag-iigi o pinagbubuti ang isang ministry event, okay? Especially from the point of view of uh, creating yung uh, parang uh, branding or a way to really uh, promote it para yung mga tao would, would really come. So, Please uh, attend this seminar kung kayo po ay kasama na sa mga manggagawa ng church, most especially if you're uh, with the praise team, the tech, the ushers, or whatever ministry na involved kayo sa yung mga tinatawag natin corporate events like uh, upbeat, uh, uh, Sunday service. You know? So please come kung kayo ay kasama sa ganong klaseng ministry. And if you want to be part of it, gusto nyo sumali sa praise team, gusto nyo kumanta, gusto nyo tumuktok, If you want to be part of this kind of uh, ministry, please attend that seminar. Again, ulitin ko po, July 13, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, corporate events workers, ministry training. Amen? All right. Okay, so welcome po muli. Welcome! Yeah. Yeah, welcome to our internet viewers. They're watching us. So our series po, starting today, is entitled Lies or Promises. And uh, I really believe na sa buhay natin as, as Christians, It's really very important for us to distinguish between lies or promises. And itong month na ito, July, in fact, uh, until August, we are really going to talk about uh, this idea. Although sa August, ang title ng ating series ay Plus. Sabihin nyo nga po, Plus. Okay? Ang series natin sa August is entitled Plus. Kasi it's all about what you need to add uh, to your life para maging effective ka lalo at Uh, you know, no, wag kang maging uh, sabi natin na parang uh, ineffective sa Christian life mo. But this month, July, we're going to focus on lies and promises. So, uh, let's pray. Let's ask God to be with us uh, this morning. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, na in your mercy, O God, uh, you want us uh, to be wise, Lord, uh, and be able to discern uh, yung mga uh, technique or schemes ng kaaway in, in trying to deceive us. So I pray that, Lord, itong series ato, Lies or Promises, that you would just um, uh, teach us and reveal to us kung ano yung mga principles, Panginoon, uh, that we can really learn and apply sa buhay namin para we can always be guided by your truth. So, Lord, thank you so much, Panginoon. We praise you. We glorify you. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us to teach us. Use me, Panginoon, in Jesus' name. Everybody say Amen. Okay, amen. So, finally, mga kapatid, napanood ko na ang Man of Steel. Yes. Alright. Ah, I watched it. Okay, kapon, uh, with my son, uh, J.I. Okay? So, uh, every, uh, every time na magtatry akong manood ng Man of Steel, uh, something happens, so hindi natutuloy. But finally, kahapon, uh, natuloy na. However, ang daming tao po sa festival mo, okay? Uh, and I thought at first uh, Man of Steel ang gustong panoodin until I discovered na Four Sisters ang gustong panoodin ng mga tao. Okay? So, dahil yung Man of Steel patapos na. Parang ako na lang yata na dito na manonood. You know? Uh, although siguro mga apat pa kami sa loob ng sinihan. Uh, praise God. 
But uh, I like the movie, although yung AMD lang ay medyo talagang disappointed ang konti. Di ba? How many of you have seen the movie? Di ba? Bakbaka na sa katotap, di ba? Tago sa mga building. Tapos ang ending, babaliin lang pala yung ulo. No? So, siguro yung parang yung director, hindi nyo na maisip. Paano wala natin i-end tong bakbaka na to? Okay, baliin mo na lang yung ulo. So, choing, okay. And of course, in fairness naman yung bida, siyempre, yeah, pogi, di ba? Maskulado, no? Hindi katulad ng dati mga Superman, di ba? Ngayon, Superman ngayon, medyo macho talaga. Okay? Nakaka-relate ako. Nakaka-relate ako. But, uh, in fairness, mga kapatid, what really, uh, you know, intrigued me dun sa, sa story, ha, was a certain character. Hindi siya yung bide, right? His name is General Zod. Okay? I was intrigued by him kasi character niya kakaiba. Eh, no? Kasi dun sa movie, for those of you who have seen the movie, si uh, Superman, was kind of parang uh, unsure of himself. Hindi niya alam yung kanyang identity, hindi niya alam ano yung purpose in life niya. No? Uh, during the first part of the movie, parang confused pa siya ano bang gagawin niya kasi may powers nga naman siya, di ba? Pero sabi ng tatay niya, huwag magagamitin yung powers mo. So, what are you going to do with that? Di ba? Imagine yung may power na gano'n, di ba? Although, I think most of you may power naman kayo, right? Sabi mo sa katawin mo, may power ka ba? Kili-kili power? Okay. Anyway. So, According to that, okay, the power. Okay, let's just move on. This guy, in in contrast to the Man of Steel, the General Zod, this is the guy na na pumpisa ng kudita dun sa planet ng Krypton. And anyway, may dalang story short siya yung pinaka villain in the movie siya kalaban ni ni Superman. But what intrigued me about him is that talaga malinaw sa kanya yung kanyang purpose in life. He really was convinced na kaya siya nag-i-exist at siya, siya mismo sabi niya, I exist for this purpose. You know? To, sabi niya, to protect my people and sabi niya, I don't care kahit anong kailangan mong gawin. Sabi niya, gano'n. Even if I kill or do violence or whatever, sabi niya, malina sa akin yung purpose ko, nandito ako, nag-i-exist ako para to make sure na yung civilization ng uh, mga cryptons, you know, are, are magpapatuloy. You know, he, he was so sure of himself. Now, of course, we know in the story, okay, na mali siya, right? Alam natin na mali yung kanya ginagawa. But the fact is, he was so certain na tama siya. And the reason why I'm intrigued about this character kasi it reminds me so much of many people. In fact, it reminds me of, of people that I've met who are really also so sure of themselves. So sure sa kanilang ginagawa and they're really convinced and they may, they may even quote scriptures to tell you na yung ginagawa nila believe sila na tama yun. But everybody knows, I mean, those who know God's will and those who understand the will of God sa paligid ng tao na yun, they, you know, myself or others, we know na mali yung ginagawa niya. But he doesn't know. He really thinks na yung ginagawa niya ay tama. You know, the Christian life is a life of discernment. It's a life of making choices kung ano ba ang papakinggan mo talaga sa buhay mo. Because you hear all sorts of voices Okay, uh, some of them, you know, maybe through media, some of them through your friends, some of them maybe even, maybe even through your own thoughts, may mga naiisip ka. But not all of these things na pumapasok sa isipan mo are necessarily true. And they're not necessarily for your own good. In fact, some of the things na narinidig natin sa paligid natin, some of the things na parang ina-accept natin or ina-embrace natin, can even be detrimental sa ating buhay without really being aware of it. That's why the topic natin ngayon is so important because the thing that I want you to recognize is this. Uh, lies, actually, the lies of Satan, the, the, the lies that he uses to destroy people, do not really come to us in the form of lies. In other words, the bad things atin, and that, that, that's the reason why they're so effective in causing us to veer away from God's will. The hill of is very effective in lies to Satan is because it doesn't come to us as lies. It comes to us as promises. In fact, hindi natin alam na actually it's a false promise until such time much later on when we discover natin na lin na lin lang pala tayo ng kaway. That's why it's, he's called a deceiver. Okay? I mean, you don't need to deceive if you're lying kasi yung mga lie na yun, alam mo na yun. Pero the only reason bakit minsan nadideceive ka ng isang lie is because it doesn't look like a lie. It doesn't sound like a lie. Sa unang pandinig mo, it sounds even good. Right? And if you would recall the Garden of Eden, you know, 
na bumagsak ang, ang tao and, and you know the fall at the time of the fall uh, how did did it come about you know basically sabi lang ni Satan kay Eve you know well did God really say that you know hindi mo you are not going to die what is that a promise sabi ni Satan kay Eve no 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 you know it, you can eat that kasi when you eat that you will become like God so Satan knows how to make promises just like God see God makes promises and Satan also makes promises now difference on the law is of course see God he tells the truth but as a Satan he uses half truths and he said he even used scripture so he, he is a liar and he lies to us unfortunately marami mga mananampalataya could not, could not distinguish between the two and there are many of you right now siguro you are doing something in your life and you're so convinced that tama yun, when in fact it's wrong and I've, I've met many believers now who would justify yung kanilang ginagawa and they would say you know, well you know feeling ko will the Lord ito or, or siguro nag pray ako or nagkaroon ako ng dream na panaginipan ko to and, and Jesus appeared to me you know kinausap ko si Lord sabi ko Lord give me a sign nagkaroon ng sign and you're really convinced ang gagawin mo ay tama because there's, there's a promise out there say gawin mo ito it's going to be so good you'll enjoy it without really realizing it's actually a lie so the key para magkaroon tayo ng effective Christian life is really to be discerning. To be able to distinguish kung isang promise ba ay talaga totoong promise from God o yung promise na naririnig mo yung parang mukhang maganda ang itsura na kung tatahakin mo parang wow, it's so attractive when in fact it's not really a promise. It's a lie. It's a false promise. It's an empty promise. And alam ni Satan how easily madali niya linlangin ang mga tao. Because, because, misa meron tayo mga desires. At naghahanap lang tayo misa ng confirmation para ma-justify natin yung pagsukay natin sa Panginoon. So this month, we want to talk about this kasi I really believe it's so essential sa Christian life natin. Now, if we're talking about the promises of God, simply by all means, yung Word of God, yung promises of God, we should really trust in them. In fact, pag tinatanong yung, how do you know kung ano ba kalooban ni Lord? People would often say, well, simple lang yan. Just go to the Word of God. But I'm sorry to say, hindi ganun kadali yun. Because like I said earlier, Satan also knows how to quote Scripture. Mas maalam pa si Satan sa Bible than most of you. Okay? So, it's not enough to say, that the way to discover kung anong kalooban ng Panginoon, the way to distinguish kung ano talaga yung lie at ano talaga yung totoong promise ng Lord is by simply going into the Word of God. To tell you, to be honest with you, people can go to the Bible and, 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 and misread the Bible and come up with all, all sorts of excuses na ginagawa nila, which is contrary to God's goal. There is a better way talaga. There is a better way. And uh, I, I want us to be aware na misan yung lie ni Satan ay nakatago sa loob ng truth. You know? In other words, he, he uses truth, but then he mixes it up, nahaluan niya ito ng isang lahi. And only a person with a discerning heart and a person who understands God's ways and God's will can detect yung lie na yan. In fact, isa sa mga judgment ng Panginoon sa isang tao, lalo na pag isang tao matig- matigas ang ulo, and this is a very difficult kind of judgment, is that he would actually close your eyes to the truth so that you would believe a lie. Yan ang pinakamatinding judgment. That's why ang pinakamagandang sinyalis din naman, ang mercy of the Lord ay umiiral pa rin sa iyo, is yung nakukonvict ka pa. Pag ikaw nakukonvict ka pa, pag ikaw ay pati, tinatamaan ka pa ng Word of God, at naapektuhan ka pa, you know, yung pag nakarinig ka ng sermon, tapos sinasabi sa iyo ng Holy Spirit, ikaw yun, and then talagang re-respond ka siya, wow, Lord, sorry. Kahit na nag-feel ka, for as long as nare-realize pa yung mali mo, may God's mercy is being applied in your life. Malalaman mo kapag isang tao is under judgment. Kasi naririnig niya na yung truth, hindi pa rin niya nag-gets. Don't let that happen to any of you. Amen? Yung meron ka naririnig yung sermon, tapos walang epekto sa'yo. Tukul na sa'yo, pero wala pa rin epekto sa'yo. Can you imagine that? Tukul na sa'yo yung topic, kasi ikaw parang, lahat ng mga katabi mo nakatingin na sa'yo. Kasi ikaw yun eh. 
Very good. So, Satan is, is a deceiver and oftentimes gagamitin niya yung mga good thoughts, mga good promises to tell you na yung ginagawa mo tama. And all the while, you will discover later on na deception pala yun. So, we need to understand what lies are. And this morning as we begin itong series na to, yun ang gagawin natin. We're going to discover paano ba natin malalaman kung ang naririnig natin, you know, Either sa isipan natin o sa kaibigan o sa isang tao. How do we determine na yung bagay na yun is not really of God? It's not really God's will. And it's not enough to say na, well, scripture naman eh. No, no, no. Kind of scripture yun, it can be misleading. So there must be a better way to judge kung yung naririnig mo is really from God. At hindi pwedeng toss ko eh. Hindi pwedeng, si Lord ba to? Hindi. Si Lord. Hindi pwedeng ganun. There must be something that is more objective and reliable for us to determine kung ang narinig ba natin ay kasi nung halinga. And I believe there is a way for that. Okay? And it goes beyond just Scripture. It has to do with understanding what Scripture is for. It has to do with understanding kung ano ba talaga ang purpose ni Lord. Bakit pa niya nire-reveal sa atin ang kanyang Word. And once we understand that, Mas malaman natin kung ano talaga ang purpose ni Lord. And I believe yun ang magiging way for us to determine kung may naririnig tayo na even though scripture din yung naririnig natin o ginagamit ng isang tao o sinasabi sa atin, di ba sabi ni Lord ganito? Di ba sabi naman ni God ganyan? And you will hear those things. And most of the time, kapag ikaw ako confused, nagingingan ng guidance, parang Lord, please guide mo ako. Somebody would come and say, di ba sabi naman ng Panginoon ganito? And you would fall into that if you don't understand. Kung nga ba talaga ang purpose ni Lord? Why He's giving us His Word? Okay? There, there is one, one, one person who was, who was really sure na tama yung ginagawa niya. No? And he said to me, Pastor, you know, alam ko na, na tama itong ginagawa ko. Kasi he's in love with somebody. I mean, I'm in love with this person. I prayed for this person. Talagang alam ko siya na eh. How, how sure are you? Well, kasi nag-pray ako and God spoke to my heart. At sabi niya sa akin, tama ka na. Siya na nga. And then, umigay ako na confirmation. Sabi ko, pag pumasok siya doon sa church, na nakapula siya, pumasok siya, nakapula, pastor. E Valentine's doon, lahat nakapula. <laughs> and he was really so sure of that. Sabi ko, alam mo, I, I don't think God is the one speaking to you. Hindi, may nabasa akong verse eh. Nakalagay doon, He is the one. <laughs> No, I said, sabi ko, you're deceiving. Hindi yun. That's not from God. How sure you are, Pastor? Di ba, di ba nangungusap si Lord? I agree, you know. Maliban sa scripture, God can speak to our hearts. He can use His still small voice. I believe na patuloy nagsasalta ang Panginoon. I, I'm not I, I'm not one of those people na parang paniniwala nila tapos na di na nagsasalta si Lord. Scripture na lang. You know, I believe God speaks to us. He can speak to us through our dreams. He can speak to us through visions. Yeah, I believe that. Pero, you know, I also know na, na Satan can even twist those things. So sabi ko sa taong ito, I don't believe God is speaking to you. Sabi niya, bakit? Well, let me explain. Di ba in love ka? Opo, pastor. Okay. Di ba lalaki ka? Opo, pastor. Yung nagugustuhan mo, lalaki rin. My husband's lover ka. That is not from God. I don't care kung anong verse ay kukot mo sa akin. I don't care kung nangusap sa iyo si Jesus. That is not from God. You're misguided. Ito yung sasabihin niya, eh bakit ka noon? Ba't siya ako bibigyan ng ganitong damdami? I'm a woman caught in a man's body. Ito yung mga dialogue, di ba? And then, sabi sa Bible, God is love. Di ba sabi sa scripture, Pastor, love one another? And you can just quote verse after verse after verse. So, matutal, you're deceived. That is not from God. Why do I know that? Because of what we're going to study today. Amen? Okay. So, here's what we're going to do dito sa month na series natin na ito. First, we'll, we'll start with 1 Peter. I'm sorry, 2 Peter pala, not first. I hope I'm not, I, I did not make a mistake sa, sa, sa verse ko. Okay? Now, we're going to learn how to discern lies or promises kasi, mga kapatid, yung choice natin determines what happens sa buhay natin. Now, this is not the, the turning point or the main idea na gusto ko sabihin. I'm just telling you, ganun kahalaga itong series na ito. Okay? So, 
We're going to look at uh, Second Peter, okay, today. At ang pag-uusapan natin is Second Peter chapter one, beginning with verse three and four. Tapos magjump tayo. We're going to jump from uh, di natin pag-uusapan yung verses five to seven. Instead, magjump na agad tayo from to verses eight hanggang eleven, okay? And the reason is this: pag-uusapan natin sa August yung verses uh, five to seven. Kasi ito sa series natin plus. Amen? Kasi if you have your Bibles, if you read there, nakalagay doon sa verse 5, uh, and, and, and you need to make every effort to add to your faith. Kaya tayo tayo ng series natin, plus. Okay, add, di ba? Add, plus, hindi multiplication, plus. Okay. Anyway, so this month na gagawin natin, 2 Peter tayo. Tapos, for the remaining three Sundays natin, we are going to study a, uh, a passage of scriptures, the book of Matthew. It's Matthew 4. Kung saan you'll find yung incident kung saan Jesus went to the desert or he was driven to the desert by the Spirit of God and he was tested or he was tempted rather by Satan. Okay? And Satan used three powerful temptations that represents basically kung ano yung usual strategy ni Satan sa ating lahat. Three temptations representing all kinds of temptations na ating pinagdadaanan. Okay? And so we're going to study that starting next, starting next Sunday hanggang sa matapos tayo ng July. Iisa-isayin natin yung tatlong temptations na yun. Okay? So huwag ka na-absent. Huwag ka na-absent. Huwag ka na-absent. Kung di matitempt na. Okay. So let's dive into this passage. Listen now. Okay, this is important. How do I know? Paano ko malalaman kung yung mga naririnig ko o yung pinapayo sa akin ng friend ko o oh, nababasa ko or nilili ko sa TV o kaya parang mabasa ko sa thoughts ko while I'm sitting down in front of the window and I'm praying Oh God, siya na ba talaga? Diba? Or ito na ba yung kukunin ko dyan and then mayroong boses Yan ang nga, yan ang nga, yan ang nga I mean, how do you how do you carefully judge ito, galing kay Lord ito or ito, hindi ito galing kay Lord I don't care kung parang may anghel na nag-a-appear sa harapan ko Diba? Uh, I don't care kung si Jesus yun, na long hair, or na mukhang parang payato. You know? It doesn't matter. There has to be a way to decide, to determine this. So, let's go to this passage para matutunan natin how to uh, discern these things. Sabi ni Peter, His divine power, now he's of course is referring to God, obviously. His divine power has given us everything. Sabi niyo nga po, everything. Okay, so that leads nothing, no? Everything and ba? Right? Everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. So what is P- Peter saying right at the very first verse of ating pinag-uusapan ngayon? He's saying na lahat na kakailanganin natin in order for us to fulfill God's purpose sa mundong ito is already given to us everything na kailangan natin. His divine power has given us everything na kakailanganin natin. Sa pamamagitan ano, through our knowledge of Him. So, our knowledge of God. Not so much our knowledge of Scripture. Are you listening? It's our knowledge of God, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's our understanding of who He is, yung heart Niya. And in fact, yun ibig sabihin talaga ng Word of God sa Bible. It's not just parang letters in a page. The Word of God is really His heart for you. His love and His concern and His purpose for you. Gusto niya i-reveal sa iyo yun. And the more that you know Him, the more that you understand, of course, it is through His Word na papaalan niya sa iyo. It is through His Word na makilala mo siya. But hindi ka nagbabasa lang ng Bible para mag-memorize ng verses. Nagbabasa ka ng Bible and you're studying the Word of God so that you may know Him. And it's the Holy Spirit who opens up your eyes and helps you understand kung sino siya. And that's how our salvation begins. In fact, you know, ewan ko kung, na, kung iba sa inyo dito na experience ito na marami na nagsishare sa iyo pero hindi mo pa rin naiintindihan for a long time. Marami na nagbabago study. Wala ka pa rin nagigets, di ba? Until one day, one time, siguro may inatinan ka, siguro freedom day or Bible study. And then, sabi na, sa, sa, you know, something click. You know, for the first time, bigla naiintindihan mo. You don't understand it, di ba? Before, lagi may nagsishare sa iyo. Wala ka maintindihan. And then, at that very moment, bam! You know, suddenly it became so clear to you. Jesus is Lord. He died for me. That way, you know, I received Christ. What has happened? God has used His Word to reveal Himself to you. So, hindi lang talaga parang Bible study. Anybody can read the Bible. Amen? In fact, maraming kultu dyan. They read the Bible, but they don't really understand what God is saying to them. 
So in the same manner, ito yung sinasabi ni Peter sa atin. God wants us to grow in our knowledge of Him. God wants us to understand yung heart ni God. Not, not so much mag-memorize ka lang ng verses. People will, will come to me and say, Oh, we stop, you know, meron this guy now, he's into drinking, you know, lasing kero siya. And then he comes to me and says, Oh, basta, sabihin mo sa akin, saan siya Bible niyang bawal ang minam? Ha? Sabihin mo, ha? He's looking for a Bible first. He's not after the heart of God. Now, kung hindi ka after God's heart, ang dali maghanap ng verses to justify your sins. Madali maghanap ng verses para sabihin mo sa mga tao na tama yung ginagawa mo. But it is by knowing Him, and this is the thing na gusto kong maintindihan niya, God wants you and I to know the Lord. It's a relationship. You know, my wife and I, we are in a relationship. Hindi ko siya pinag-aakala na parang verse. You know, hey, let me see. Tingnan ko nga ko ng preposition ni Gina. Saan ba yung adverb? And, and, you know, she is not, you know, she is a person. And so, pag nag-text siya sa akin, hindi ko ina-analyze yung text na parang, okay, sabi niya, K. Ano kayo ibig sabihin ito? God wants me to know my wife and my wife to know me so that we may become one. And it's the same thing with God. God doesn't want you to memorize verses. Yun lang, hindi. Of course, maganda yung mag-memorize ng verses. But you can memorize the verses of Bible and not understand God's heart. Katulad ng mga Pharisees. They know Scripture. Di ba? Yung mga Pharisees, mga Sadducees. Alam nila yung word of God, pero hindi nakalala si Lord. Kaya kasi ng far, you see. And sad, you see. Because knowing the Bible per se, does not mean that you know God. So it's important na makilala mo siya, personally. Para yung mga decisions mo in life, is in line with who it is. Let me illustrate again in marriage siya. Okay? Some of you are not married, but you understand this once you get married. Now, through the years, as I get to know my, my wife, sa episode, umpisa, hindi ko siya ganun kakilala. So many times, nagkaka-conflict kami because I do certain things na hindi pala, you know, hindi pala pleasing sa kanya, so no hurt siya. So maraming years na ganun na nahihirapan ako. But through the years, hopefully, and uh, I'm learning, no? Pastor Regina, unti-unti, no? Yeah, I'm learning. So ngayon, uh, when I, even when I am away, o kaya maglayo kami sa isang kwarto, and malayo siya, nandito ako, nandun siya, we don't need to talk. And I would just look at her, and she would just look at me. And I would know in my heart, na hindi ko dapat gawin yun. O itigil ko dapat yun. Or gawin ko yun, or whatever, right? Because I know her. I know her heart. Alam nyo, Christian life is not about rules. It's about knowing your Savior. And understanding His heart for you. So, Christian life, hindi parang nilistahan ka ng, ba- ng bawal, hindi pwedeng gawin. It's not a do's or don'ts kind of religion. It's a relationship. So, may nagtanong sa akin, Pastor, ba't kayo mga Christian, hindi kayo umiinom? Bawal ba yan sa religion nyo? And I answered, hindi. Bakit kayo hindi umiinom? Kasi ayaw mo saktan si Jesus. Because He's my Lord. You see, when I got out of verses, you will not be kita. Thou shall not drink more. <laughs> so, magi inom ka, na, right? Because wala na man tuyo na. Well, by the way, wala na thou shall not smoke. Ha, pastor, si na abi mo ma, easy ka You see, if you're going to look for verses, baka wala ka magitan verse. And the, the, does, uh, does that mean na pwede mo nang gawin yung gusto mong gawin? But if you know the heart of God, you know there are things that does not give God joy sa buhay mo. And that's why you say no to those things. Hindi dahil nakalista siya. Are you listening? I hope you'll learn this. Amen? Sana ba wala na sa atin yung pagiging legalistic na uy, bawal ba yan sa lilihon natin? You know, that kind of thing is very shallow. Dapat yung Christian faith mo hindi nakabase sa rules. Dapat yung Christian faith mo nakabase sa love. Amen? Amen. 
So if somebody were to ask you, but if you can have all those, I mean, because I love Jesus. That's why. Amen po ba? Magubi sa palatan. Through this, sabi niya, okay, through the power of God, you know, sabi niya, He has given us His very great and precious promises. So that's a summary of everything that sinasabi niya sa Word of God. So sinasabi niya, He has given us the Bible, the Word of God, and all the mga promises niya. Here's the important thing. If, if we don't understand this, makakala natin tapdo na matapos yun. Ah, may Bible pala eh. So okay, alam pa na gagawin ko. May Bible pala eh. No, no. Sabi niya, He has given us His very great and precious promises so that, sabi niya nga po, so that. So that. Now, ano sabihin niyo, so that? Yung ba yung hindi inom mo? Yun? So that? <laughs> May nag-remark sa internet, si Paul Jean daw gumagaya na sa mga jokes ko. <laughs> so that means, ito yung purpose. So, listen carefully. Here's, here's, the, here's the clue. Para ma-discern mo kung isang bagay ay galing sa Panginoon, hindi pwedeng kasi Bible lang yun o Scripture lang yun. There is a purpose. God gave His Word so that. Naintindahin niyo ba yun? And that's how you begin to to discern kung yung naririnig mo ba o yung dreams mo o yung guidance sa'yo o nag-appear sa'yo si Jesus o whatever it is na tumarating sa'yo may nabasa ka this is how you will know now whether ito bang naririnig mo o tinatanggap mo is away from the Lord or not whether it's a lie or really an act of promise from God this is how you'll know it okay so sabi niya so that through them ano yung them yung mga promises niya yung word of God niya so that through them sabi niya ganito you may participate in the divine nature. So the, ver- the very first purpose ng Word of God is so that you may participate in the divine nature. Now, hindi ibig sabihin na magiging God ka, tapos pupunasan namin yung paa mo, yung kusali ka namin. No, that's not it. Pag sinabi natin to participate in the divine nature, ibig sabihin ni Peter, ang purpose ng Word of God is to make you into the image and likeness of God. In other words, the purpose of the Word of God is to transform your character mo so that you would look more like Jesus. So that you would live more like Jesus. So that you would love more like Jesus. In other words, over time, alam mo galing si Lord yung Word na yan kasi natatransform ka from glory to glory, you become more like Jesus Christ. So it's not just Word. Hindi lang basta Scripture yan. Kasi you, you, can, you can use scripture and then the ending nito is, you know, there's nothing about you that looks like Jesus. For example, alam naman natin na mayroong mga kulto sa Bible na ganyan mong magturo ng Bible. Right? You're aware of that. So, sa panonood ka ng TV, may mga station dyan, pag kiniklik mo, matutuwa ka kasi, di ba, ang galing mag quote ng verse, kakot yun ang verse nyo, sulod-sulod, so parang, wow, ang galing, you know? So maraming tao, nagagalingan sila. And then at the same time, marinig na, nagmumura yung tao, inaaway lahat ng tao. Let me tell you, kahit na kukot ka ng verse, you don't look like God to me. Malalaman mo talaga na it's from the Lord kasi ang nangyayari sa buhay mo, at yun ang purpose ng word of God, is to make you more and more like His Son. So if you are if you are telling me na well you know pinagpray ko ito eh really oh nang usap sa akin si Lord dito eh isa na na napanaginipa ko pa nga to eh really if i look at your life and i don't see Jesus becoming more and more manifested sa buhay mo i don't think you're you're being guided by the Lord at all kung ang nakikita kong ugali mo hanggang ngayon, ano ka pa rin, di ba? Mat- ano ka pa rin, mat- matatalim ka pa rin ng, ng, ano, ng, 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 ng galit sa mga tao, tapos ano ka, sinungalin ka pa rin, ikaw pa rin yung tao na talaga hindi marunong sumunod sa, sa mga tao na nakakataas sa iyo, no? barumbado ka pa rin sa magulang mo, o ikaw bilang, mar- bilang magulang, no? masyado ka pa rin harsh sa mga anak mo, kahit na mag-quote ka sa akin ng verse, I don't think that is from God. Because if something is really from God, ang resulta niya is that you become more and more like Jesus. Amen? And then he said, sabi niya, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So in other words, ang dapat nangyayari sa'yo is a kind of transformation, okay, na unti-unti nagiging less and less worldly ka at nagiging more and more godly ka. 
yung oras mo, yung time mo, yung energy mo, yung talents mo, more and more nagagamit mo for the things of God and the kingdom of God. Now let me illustrate that. There's this guy who comes to me and says, Ano mo, Pastor, uh, nga pala, pag-pray mo ako, ah. Bakit? Kasi, uh, mag-abroad na ako, mag-apunta ko sa ibang bansa, magkatrabaho ko doon. And, uh, you know, pinag-pray ko naman ito. Tapos, eh, binigay naman ni Lord. Di ba, ganun yung isang sa isip ng mga tao. Pag, pag pinag-pray mo, binigay, si Lord yung nagbigay. No? And, and you know, not necessarily so. Kasi minsan, you know, binigay sa iyo pero actually hindi naman si Lord ang nagbigay sa iyo. No? Hindi lahat ng hindi lahat ng para sa kutsa prayer nangangahulog na kay Lord nagaling yan. So this guy says, pinag-pray ko to eh. Really, sabi ko. And what happened? Well, pinag-pray ko at nagkaroon naman ako ng peace. At uh, ano, nagkaroon ako ng peace, sabi ko, Lord, kung talagang kalooban mo itong trabaho nito, eh, pasamo ko sa lahat ng mga interviews. At uh, pag nakapasa na ako sa mga interviews, Lord, alam ko, galing sa yung guidance. Well, yun naman ang nangyari. Pumasa sa lahat. At alam mo, ano naging isulta later on? He became worldly. He became a lover of money. He forgot about God. He was no longer serving the Lord. Wala na siyang time to pray. Hindi siya nagsishare ng faith niya. He has become totally worldly. And so, kung ano man yung guidance yung sinasabi niya nun, and the reason bakit siya nagpunta sa ganun direksyon, is really not from God. That is not God. God will not lead you to a place na mapapalayo ka sa Kanya. That will be contrary to His desire for you. Pinag-pray ko itong tao na to eh. Talagang, ewan ko ba, talagang tumitibok yung puso ko pag nakikita ko siya eh. Alam ko, kami na talaga eh. At ano resulta niya sa buhay niya pareho? Ayun, hindi na kami na si church. Kaming dalawa na lang titigan. So are you, are you still using your time, talents, and treasure for the kingdom of God? Eh, wala na kami panahon kasi wala kami ginawa kundi magsamang dalawa at mag-usap. That is not from God. That's not God. That's you. Ikaw lang yun. You're just using God as an excuse. At nagahanap ka ng verses para patunayan mo na yung ginagawa mo is from God. But that is not God. Ikaw lang talaga yun. And I know many people are like that. May sila gustong gawin, and they use God. And they look for a verse. Hindi sabi dito sa verse na ganito eh. Pastor, pinag-pray ko eh, pumikit nga ako eh. Lord, kung ito na po talaga gagawin ko, sabihin mo lang, gawin mo na. <gasps> Again, if you don't understand the heart of God, you can easily be deceived. So, paano mo malalama kung isang bagay is from the Lord and not from the Lord? Kasi if it's from the Lord, it's leading you more and more toward closeness to God. If it's from the Lord, lalo ka napapamahal sa Panginoon, lalo nagkakaroon ka ng Christ-centeredness and kingdom-orientedness sa buhay mo. If it's from the Lord, kung yung job na yun from the Lord, ang nagiging resulta niyan is you become more uh, in tune with God's will doon sa lugar na yun. You become a, a salt and a light. Hindi yun, nakalimutan mo na si Lord ako nag-aaral ka doon. Nakalimutan mo na si Lord ako nagtatrabaho ka doon. That is not from the Lord. Kahit sabi mo sa akin, si Lord, ginahit ako sa trabaho na yun. Well, where's the Lord there? Don't tell me na meron ka nakita ang verse. Because if it's really from the Lord, if it's really from God guiding you in that direction, makikita mo yung resulta niya. It gives glory to God. Makikita mo na tama yung pagkarinig mo kasi resulta no, yung bunga na no, is all pleasing to God. Mas lalo kang nagiging Christ-centered, mas lalo kang nade-develop yung karakter mo, mas lalo kang nagiging godly, mas lalo kang nagiging salt and light, hindi mo napapabayaan yung relationship mo with the Lord, mas lalo kang nakakapag-share ng faith mo, mas lalo nagbubunga yung buhay mo, and other people come to Christ as a result ng nandun ka, yes, 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 that is from the Lord. Pero kung nandun ka lang para kumita at para umaman, you're just using the Lord. The Lord is not part of it. Amen? Maybe He was at the beginning as naging disobedient ka na in the long run. <laughs> now, listen careful, carefully dito. Let's jump to verse 8. I told you na i-skip natin yung verses 5 to 7. Babalikan natin yung sa August. Okay? In our series called Plus. 
Verse 8 says, For if you possess these qualities, and he's talking about yung mga idadagdag mo sa faith mo, kaya nga plus yun. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. So how, how would you know? How would you know na yung nare-receive mong guidance is from the Lord? Kasi you are becoming more effective and productive in your Christian life. Alright? Yeah, for example, ang mapasama sa small group, ang mapasama sa isang mentoring relationship, yung, mag- yung magkaroon ka ng accountability, that's good for your growth. Right? And so pag narinig mo yung mga ganun, hindi ka, uh, sa- sali ka sa grupo namin, o hindi ka, join ka para mat- enroll tayo, o attend tayo ng seminar, huwag mo i-rebuke nyo, ay rebuke na, kisita niyan, kisita niyan. Hindi kisita niyo. Okay? Kim Lord John, alam mo yung kay, kay Sita? Huwag kang umatin dyan. Halika, manood na lang tayo ng Four Sisters. Ay, tigilan mo na yan. Halika na dito, mag-enjoy na lang tayo ng buhay natin. Ay, mag-burakay na lang tayo. Huwag ka na mag-commit-commit dyan. Huwag ka na, mag- huwag ka na mag-commit sa isang church. Ito, alam mo, maging free ka. Halika, kailangan walang magdagukod sa'yo ng ano. Kailangan walang tao nagsasabi sa'yo. Ay, di ba? Ikaw ba gusto ba yun? Di ba? You must be free for the truth sets us free. That is a lie from Satan. You see, to be committed in a local church and to grow in the context of relationships, that is God's will. See, Lord, yan. Amen? Ang hindi kay Lord is yung akala mo na pumapasok sa isipan mo na galing lamang sa sarili mo mga thoughts. They are not from God. So, learn to discern. Paano mo malalaman? Uh, scripture? Hindi. Hindi lang Scripture kundi understanding the purpose of God for your life. Amen? Now, look. In your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, as a result ng knowledge mo kay Lord, okay? Kung talagang galing kay Lord yung knowledge mo na yan, ang nangyayari siya, nagiging productive ka. Okay? As a Christian, ibig sabihin mo, may mga nadadala ka kay Lord, tapos nagmumultiply ka, Marami mga tao ang na naiimpluwensya mo at nakakapag-develop ka pa ng ibang taong tulad mo na nagiging ano rin, productive din. Yung knowledge mo talaga, it's from the Lord. It's a good proof, evidence yan, yung natututunan mo from the Lord. Pero kung nangyari sa buhay mo, eh, lalo nagkakaroon ng mga broken relationship, lalo nag-aaway, lalo nagkakagulo family mo, tapos ikaw, basyado ka nagiging emo, tapos you claim to know the Bible, you know, that's not from God. You're deceiving yourself. Okay? Because if it's from God, ang resulta niya is fruit and the glory of God. Now look, sabi ni Peter, but whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. How would you know na yung tumatakbo sa iyo, sa utak mo dyan, yung philosophy mo, how would you know na hindi ka kanil kay Lord dyan? Kasi ang nangyayari sa iyo, parang nakakalimutan mo that you have been saved. So whatever it is that is in your mind, okay? Lahat kasi tayo may mga thoughts tayo. Lahat sa kamay, lahat may mga thoughts. Ay, salamat. Lahat tayo, we decide things based on what we think. Amen? Pag naisip mo isang bagay, gagawin mo, right? Minsan kahit na pagpayuhan ka pa nga ng mga tao, eh, Uy, sister, huwag mong gawin yan. Pag-pray nyo na lang ako. Totoo na, gagawin mo ba rin talaga, di ba? Because there are certain things that is running inside your mind at iniisip mo, hindi, gusto ko yan, mabuti naman yan eh. Galing naman yan kay Jesus eh. Pinag-pray ko naman yan eh. Hmm, is it? Alam mo yun, yung ganito? How do you know that's really from God? Kasi as a result nung pumapasok sa isipan mo, you are beginning to really enjoy the fruit of your salvation. Nakikita talaga yung pagbabago ng buhay mo. Okay? So, if, if I look at you, tapos nakikita ko na lalo kang nagbe-bear fruit, lalo kang nagiging effective sa Christian life mo, lalo kang na umiiwas sa mga alam mong hindi pleasing kay Lord, alam ko na yung tumatakbo sa isip mo is really from the Lord. Amen? Pero kung yung mga ginagawa mo, for sinasaktan mo lahat ng tao, ang mong pamilya mo, nag-iiyak sa'yo kasi wala kang gano'n, hindi mag-senglot-senglot dyan. You know? Lahat ng mga kapatira mo sa Panginoon, sinasabihan ka, hindi mo pinapansin. Huh? You know, what is going on inside your mind is of, is of the evil one. Hindi yan si Lord. Kasi isa lang naman ang pakay ni Satan eh. 
to make sure na yung buhay mo does not give glory to God. Amen? Kaya pag nakakita kayo tayo mga ganyang bunga sa buhay natin, pag nakikita natin sa life natin na parang na ano tayo, it's time to evaluate. Ano ba yung mga pasok sa isip ko? Bakit ba ganito yung mga nangyayari? Bakit ganito ba yung takbo ng isip mo? Bakit yung tao na yun, masyado kang obsessed, hindi mo na nakikita yung purpose ni Lord sa life, Lord sa life mo? Amen? So, sabi ni Peter, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort, gawin mo talaga no, sa lahat ng mga magagawa mo, to confirm your calling and election. Now, just pay attention sa nangyayari sa buhay mo because kung hindi nangyayari sa iyo yung purpose ni Lord, that means ang umiiral sa iyo mga thoughts is not from God. Ang nagdidirect ng life mo, okay, yung mga decisions mo, pinagagalingan ito, are not godly thoughts, they are not thoughts coming from God, they are your own thoughts, kahit na meron pang verses dyan sa isipan mo. It is not resulting in a kind of life that is pleasing to God. So, sabi ni Peter, for if you do this thing, sabi niya ganun, you will never stumble. Now, how would you know ang isang tao, sa tamang lugar siya, nakikinig siya kay Lord? Kasi yung life niya, tuloy-tuloy, bearing fruit eh. Hindi yung bigla na lang siya magbabackslide, bigla na lang siya mawawala. Pag ikaw nagbabackslide ka, nawawala ka sa Panginoon, ibig sabihin, iba yung pinapakinggan mo. Are you listening? So, if you see a person na dati nagsiserve kay Lord, tapos ngayon hindi na, that means nakinig siya. Meron siyang pinakinggan thoughts that is not from God. Sabi ng thoughts na yun, tigil mo na yung church-church na yan. Tama na yung ministry-ministry na yan. Huwag ka nang sumama sa small group. Sige na, tutuparin mo na lang yung pangapangarap mo sa buhay. Pag yumaman ka, saka mo na lang sila bigyan ng, bigyan ng donation. Basta importante, maging successful ka sa karil mo. And you listen to it, and as a result, nawala ka sa church. And it's all about the promises that you heard. May narinig kang promises. Sinabi sa ni Satan eh. Pag inuna mo yung karir mo, magiging successful ka. Tapos maiingit sa'yo yung mga kapatiran mo sa church. Kasi maganda na yung cellphone mo. Tapos sasabihin nila, buti pa siya. Yes, so ikaw, na-imagine mo na yung tura mo, di ba? Darating ang araw, pagdating ko sa araw ng CC, okay? Pag naging successful na ako, darating ko na yung mga pangarap ko, darating ako sa araw ng CC. Okay, go. So, yung mga tao, lalapit sa'yo, Uy, galing naman. Uy, may, uy, may kamera kang gadget. Uy, ha, tayo, Samsung S4. Uy, ang ganda. Mahal yan, ha. Kaya, kaya ng allowance ko yan. Now, listen. It may not yet be true at the moment, pero Satan shows it to you. He tells you, if you go in that direction, at itigil mo na yung ginagawa mong puro pa life to life. If you go in this direction, this is what is going to happen. And you look at it and say, S4, Samsung, magandang dami, chikot, <laughs> nice promise. And you listen to a promise. Because you see, mga kapatid, the lie does not come to you in the form of a lie. It comes to you in the form of a promise. Kasi pag sinabi sa'yo ni Satan, pag sinulog, sinulog mo, oh, masusulog ka. At ang buong pamilya yung mamamatay. Susunod ka ba? Sasabihin pa ni Satan, sige, patayin mo ang buong pamilya ko. No, no, no. The only reason why you would obey an a certain direction is because you think something good is going to happen. And Satan paints it in such a way na ura naman, di ba will the Lord dyan na maging masaya ka? Oh. Di ba will the Lord na ma-provide mo yung pangangailangan ng pamilya mo? Tama. Di ba will the Lord na gumanda ka at tas makapag-donate ka sa ch- totoo yan. And you follow that promise. Knowing or not knowing that at the end of the road, you will be so far from God. And you don't know paano ka babalik. So, I want to define lies for you. Okay? 
And this is how would you know kapag may mga pasok sa isip mo and it's a lie. Because lies are this. Lies are promises that contradict God's purposes. Lies are promises. And they may be good promises. Listen carefully. They may be, hindi sila, hindi to evil promises, hindi yung parang, mamamatay ka, they're good. You'll be okay, you'll be, you know, sisik ka, you'll become, you know, sasali ka sa The Voice, you know, mananalo ka, you'll become well-known, you know, magkakapangalan ka, it's good, there's nothing wrong. They are promises. But they contradict God's purposes. And so the key to discernment po, mga kapatid, is to understand the purpose of God for your life. Amen? It's not just about listening to some verses, it's about understanding the heart of God for you. Ano ang heart ni God for you? For you, para, for you, for me, lahat tayo dito, to become more Christ-like, to become more like Jesus, and to use yung life natin dito sa mundong ito. For His glory. To serve Him with the time, talents, and treasure na meron ako. To the utmost of my ability so that God may be glorified in my life. That is the will of God for me. So pag inoferan mo ako, and you suggest to me, and say, wala mo, pag nag-apply ka sa Canada, mataas ang score mo doon. Tapos pag nakapunta ka doon, ba, libre lahat ang medical, ano mo doon. Your family will be taken care of. And you will have a good pension. All of that is good. Amen? There's nothing evil about it. Pag sinabi mo sa akin, pag nakapunta ka sa ganitong bansa, lahat makakalagay yung anak ko, mga kapag-aral, hindi ka na mag-worry about the education kasi subsidized them. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Nothing is bad about it. Except, it is not God's purpose for me. Alam ko ang purpose ni Lord sa akin ay hindi lang ako yumang. Ang purpose ni Lord sa akin hindi lang yung makatapos ng pag-aaral ng mga anak ko. God's purpose is bigger than that for my life. And so that's how you keep your heart in tune with God. That's how you say no even to things that may sound good. And that's how you say yes even to those things that look hard. Because God's purpose is the guiding principle ng buhay natin. And the more you know God, the more you understand God's purpose for your life. Now, just to apply this, mga kapatid, alam nyo may kasabihan ng mga Amerikano, not so much sa uh, mga Pilipino kasi hindi natin alam, so I'll explain to you yung kasabihan. Yung mga Amerikano kasi, whenever they want to make a decision, they would say, play the movie. Sabi nyo nga po, play the movie. Play the movie. Ang ibig sabihin ng play the movie, you're thinking about something. Now, let's just imagine what would happen pag tinuloy-tuloy natin yung decision na yun. Play the movie means, okay, you're gonna do this, di ba? Sasagutin mo na siya, alright? Fine, okay. Let's play the movie. Let it continue. Hanggang sa umabot tayo dito sa credits. Pag dating dito sa credits, pa nakita na natin yung ending na story, alright? Lalabas na yung mga credits. Directed by Satan. Starry, all the demons of this world. <laughs> diba? You see, if you don't play the movie, kung titignan mo lang yung immediate na benefit, parang, wow, ang ganda niyan. Uy, siguro pag kami na nagkatuluyan, mo, sabi naman niya kasi, pag sinagot ko na siya, magsiserve na rin siya kay Lord eh. Ano ba siya ngayon? Siya buwadik? Pero balang araw, alam ko, natuloy-natuloy kami. Malagang sabi niya, oh, bumor na gina rin siya eh. Now, play the movie! Play the movie! He may be attractive right now, pogi siya, but play the movie. He does not care about God na yun. Play the movie. Then let's see how it will go. And there are many people who don't want to play the movie because they decided na sila sa gagawin nila. Right? Pag decided ka na sa gagawin mo, ayaw mo nang isipin na there may be consequences to your actions. And I've seen many people who have so many regrets, you know, 
Ngayon, nandun na sila, hindi sila makakalis. Maybe they're married na. They're married to the wrong person. Uh, that person doesn't care about God. Pero bago nila pakasatan yun, there were already people who were saying, please pray about it. Please ask God. Eh, noong time na yun, noong nagkakaintapan pala kayo, siya, siya ang prinsipe ng buhay ko. Hindi mo nakikita eh, kasi you don't want to play the movie. And you don't want to listen to people who were saying, look, sa tingin ko sa kanya right now, he doesn't care about God. He's not going to serve God. Ikaw, you want to serve God. You have a heart for the Lord. Yung nagugustuhan mo does not have a heart for the Lord. Please pray about it. So ikaw naman parang hindi. Hindi totoo yan. Get deep behind me, Satan. So ngayon, years later, you have no other choice. You're with a person who doesn't care about God. Sabi niya, he will think about God. Oh, mag-asawa na kayo. But he's not. He doesn't care about God now. And then struggle ka lagi, every time siya sabihin mo gusto mong mag-serve, o gusto mong may gawin kay Lord, lagi siya, siya lagi ang kalaban mo. <laughs> Don't you know that ang purpose talaga ng marriage is to fulfill the purpose of God, at hindi para sa emosyon? Lamang. Amen? Because kung sinabi ni Lord sa Bible, it's not good for man to be alone, hindi niya ibig sabihin lonely, kasi kasama niya si God. Amen? Now, ibang seminar yun, you know, I'll teach you that one day. Pero the reason why talaga ng partner, you're looking for somebody na pwede mo maging partner in fulfilling God's will. Amen. Kaya ka nag-aasawa. Amen. So play the movie. Amen? Ano yung mga kabataan dito? Kasi yung mga kabataan, puro, di ba? Pag, pag pinana ka ng kupi doon, di ba? Hindi <gasps> ka na nag-iisip. Siya na talaga eh. Wala lang kung magawa Listen carefully now. Play the move. And I don't care kung ang usap sa'yo si Jesus. Remember this. Lies are promises that contradict God's purposes. Play the move. Amen? Napakarami mga tao. There was this person Hindi ko na sasabihin yung pangalaman. I'm, I'm going to change some of the facts because I don't want you to think of that person. Or try to, sino kaya yun? You know, I don't want you to think like that. This person had a wonderful family. Wonderful wife. Wonderful children. And he was serving God. Very passionate siya for the kingdom of God. Kaya lang in love siya sa isang tao in the church. And slowly, did that... And there was this church member who lahat ng bagay sa kanya is so beautiful. They started talking muna at first sharing, sharing lang. Coffee, coffee. Kain, kain. Rienda, merienda. They were always together. And then they were sharing their dreams and feelings with each other. And people were already saying to him, Bro, <laughs> Wah, wow, ingat ka dyan. Huwag ganyan. Hindi mo sayo, wala naman. Friends lang kami. Friends lang talaga. Seriously. Friends lang naman talaga. Kaya lang, misa, they would stay a long time in the church talking about ministry and then talking about other things. And then he slowly fell in love with a woman in the church. And sabi, alam niya, mali yun. But he was saying, God, bakit ka nito? Kung talaga hindi tama ito, ba't ko nararamdaman ito? And he prayed, and he prayed, and people were telling him, bro, mali yan, mali yan. But he prayed, and he was looking for guidance. Until finally, the Lord said, you have to follow your heart. You have to You have to be honest with yourself. Kailangan magpakatotoo ka. Kasi kung talaga siya yung talagang pinagpipray mo noon pa, 
Mali yung kinakasamahan mo ngayon. And he started looking for verses in the Bible that would justify the kanyang sin. And to make a long story short, he left his family and he went to be with his woman. And that destroyed his family, that destroyed the church, that destroyed a lot of lives. Ang malungkot ito, to this very day, I won't tell you who he is, to this very day, pag tinanong mo siya, he would say, well, will the Lord do it? Sabi ni Lord, gawin ko yun. And it just breaks my heart to say to that person, it is the Lord yun, but it's not God. Akala mo lang si Lord yun. Pero it is the Lord yun. And if you can just learn how to discern yung mga naririnig mo thoughts in your mind, kahit na minsan parang feeling mo si God yun, if you can just understand the purposes of God for your life, then you can resist temptation. Then you can say no to the lies of the evil one. Then you can simply say, pag mapasok yung thoughts na yun, I won't entertain that. Kasi it will destroy my life. It will destroy my kids. It will destroy my family. It will destroy our church. No, I won't do that. Yeah, it sounds very attractive. Tama yun. Pag pinuntahan ko yan, siguro baka maging happy ako, quote unquote. But in the long run, I will be miserable. In the long run, I will suffer for it. Play the movie. Play the movie at the dulo. And then you will realize, no way. I'm not going in that direction. Sounds good, but God's promises are far better. I will go with God's promises. Eh, hindi ka masaya dun! Hindi ka, hindi ka masaya kasi yung nakasama mo, walang ginawa mo di. Parang dragon, araw-araw lumalabas, apoy. Well, you know, I will stick with God's promises. And I will love that person. And be with that person forever. Because God did not call me to be happy. He called me to glorify His name. Amen? Will you stand up? Will you say to the person beside you, and kaliwa ko kaya kanan, you decide, sabi mo, simula nga yan, Huwag ka basta-basta makikinig sa mga naiisip mo, sa panaginip mo, baka na sobra ka pala ng balot. Be discerning. Amen? Maging discerning tayo. Amen? Hindi lahat ang nararamdaman mo. Okay. Hindi lahat ang nararamdaman mo. Oh, let's make it personal. Hindi lahat ang nararamdaman ko. Hindi lahat ang naiisip ko. Ay galing kay Lord. Yung iba, galing kay Satan. And then look at the person beside. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Did you learn something for today? Amen. Amen.